Here's how to install an NVMe drive. Now we are not replacing the main OS drive in this video, okay? So if you wanted to do that, you'd have to clone the original drive and then replace it. So we'll cover that in a different video. Now, what we're doing here is adding a second NVMe drive into a different NVMe slot to increase our storage space. So this PC currently has a single one terabyte NVMe drive, as you can see here. Now I'll be installing this drive into an Asus Rogue Strikes G16 laptop, but the steps will be similar for other laptops that have two internal NVMe slots, and it will also be similar for many desktops. But always consult the manual for your specific computer before you do this upgrade. There are also different types and sizes of NVMe drives, so if you don't know the exact type that you need, again, consult the manual for your specific computer. We'll be installing this crucial T500 Pro Gen 4 NVMe M2 SSD drive. It's two terabytes, super fast, five-year warranty, great drive, great price, and in fact, I'm gonna have a link for it and some other NVMe drives that I recommend in the description below if you wanna pick one up for yourself. All right, let's get started. First, shut down your computer. Then make sure you unplug it. And if your laptop happens to have a removable battery, be sure to remove it. However, just like this laptop and many laptops today, you know, they have batteries that are sealed inside and are not removable. Next, we'll flip the laptop over and remove the bottom so we can access the motherboard. Of course, if you have a desktop, this is much easier. You can just pull off the side panel. But for us, we need to remove these screws. Be sure to set these aside in a safe place and do not lose them. Once all the screws are removed, for this laptop, I have to unsnap the bottom from the rest of the case. Now be very careful doing this, you don't wanna break anything. If you don't have tools for this, like a plastic pry bar, then you can use a flathead screwdriver, a guitar pick, you know, maybe even a knife, as long as you're very, very careful. So I'll just go all around this, carefully unsnapping it. Once you're done, slowly remove the bottom. Now, some laptops have wires that are connected to the bottom that have to be disconnected before you remove it. Again, consult your manual so you know what you're getting into. But for this laptop, we can just remove the bottom. Once you're inside the computer, if you see any dust, it's always a good idea to clean this up with either compressed air or a dry rag. You do not want to use any liquids or sprays inside the computer. Now, some laptops may require you to disconnect the internal battery before performing an upgrade, but in our case, we can just leave it connected. All right, so here is the currently installed NVMe drive. We're not gonna touch this. Here is where the RAM is installed. And right here under this cover is our second NVMe slot. And the drive will simply slide in to the slot and it only goes in one way, okay? So take note of the notch on the slot Grab your NVMe drive, and you'll also see a notch. On the other end of your NVMe drive, you'll see another notch, and that will go underneath this screw. So I'll remove the screw and set it aside. Then simply line up the notch in your drive with the notch in the slot. Angle it upwards slightly and push it in. Now this should slide in very easily, so do not force it. Once the drive is in, push it down gently, and it should snap around the post for the screw. Then replace the screw. Now, right there, I dropped the screw inside the case. Try not to do that because you can lose it underneath the motherboard, and then you gotta shake it to get it out. It's a, it's a whole problem, all right? These are very, very tiny screws, so just go slow and carefully replace it. All right, that's it. We have the NVMe drive installed. Let's leave the plastic cover over it. And then we have to replace the bottom or put the side panel back on your desktop. For this laptop, I'll line up the bottom and snap it in. Then replace all the screws. All right, flip it over. I'll plug it in and turn it on. Now the first boot may take a little longer than normal. So for this computer, it has to install an update. Okay, so it's booted up. Let's head to this PC and check out our new drive. And, oh no, our second drive isn't showing up. This guy doesn't know what he's talking about. He ruined my computer. Dislike the video. Let's freak out. No, 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 listen. Don't freak out, okay? This is totally normal. Before you can use the drive that you just installed, you have to initialize it and format it. All right, so for Windows 11, right click the Windows icon in the taskbar and go to Disk Management. 
Now you should get a pop-up saying that you need to initialize a new disk. And if that doesn't come up automatically for you, you may need to go to action and click refresh and then it should pop up. For most people, you'll want to choose GPT since that is the latest standard and it should be the default selection. Click OK and the disk will initialize. Here it is with the black bar across the top and it says unallocated. So now we need to format. Right click the disk, choose new simple volume. Next, leave all this stuff on default. Next, and now we can assign a drive letter to our new disk. This can be any letter that's available, so just choose whatever you want. I'm going to choose E. Next, the file system for Windows should be NTFS, so just leave that alone. Leave allocation size to default. For volume label, you can enter any name that you want, you know, maybe call it storage, or if you're a musician and you're gonna record to that drive, maybe call it recording. If you're a gamer and you're gonna store games there, call it games or gaming, whatever you want, you know? So enter whatever name you want, but I'm going to name it Crucial. Leave it on Perform Quick Format, and we do not want to compress files or folders. Next, confirm your choices and click Finish. Then just wait a few seconds or maybe a few minutes, and that's it. The drive is formatted and ready to use. So let's go to this PC, and there it is. Awesome. Next, we'll transfer some files to it to make sure that it works and see how fast it is. Boom, look at that, practically instant. Now, how about a large video file? So this video is over 55 gigs. Look at this, wow. It's only going to take around 25 seconds to transfer this massive 55 gig file. Man, now that is crazy. All right, so guess what? You're all done. So whether you're a gamer and you need a place to store all of your games and game clips that you record, or maybe you're a musician and you want a dedicated drive to record to and to hold all of your sample libraries, or maybe you're a video editor and you need more space for all of your video clips, or perhaps you're just a normal person who wants to store backups, pictures, videos, music, documents, etc., and you want that on a secondary drive, so it's not taking up so much space on your main C or OS drive. And that internal NVMe drive is going to be so much faster than using external USB drives. Once again, I'll have links in the description below for NVMe drives that I recommend. So that's it. You have successfully installed and formatted a new NVMe drive and increased the internal storage on your PC.